Hello there, my name is David Hill and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Architect for VMware's Cloud Services Business Unit, vCloud Air. Today I want to give you an introductory overview of the Disaster Recovery Cloud offering provided by VMware vCloud Air. vCloud Air Disaster Recovery offers VMware vSphere customers the ability to protect their on-site business critical workloads and then recover them in the cloud in the event of a local disaster or disruptive event. You can configure recovery point objectives of 15 minutes to 24 hours and perform unlimited seven day runtime tests. Included in the subscription price is the ability to run your failed over virtual machines for up to 30 days. A key feature in this disaster recovery offering is multi point in time recovery. This allows you to recover back to 24 previous replication points in time. For example, let's say you set a 15 minute recovery point objective and you start the replication at 10 a.m. Every 15 minutes, a replication cycle is kicked off and only data changes or deltas are retained. In the event of a failover, you can pick a specific time to recover a VM from. Therefore, if your data center has an issue and you need to fail over 11 a.m. and you find that the latest copy contains errors, you can choose to recover using a copy taken at 10.15 a.m. instead. With multiple point-in-time recovery, you can select a specific point you want to recover your data from, allowing you to successfully recover in the event of data corruption. Native Failback allows you to replicate your virtual machines back to your on-premises data center after you have performed a failover. This is really important when you think about how, in the event of a disaster, you fail over all your virtual machines to the cloud. You need the ability to restore your services in your data center. Native Failback allows you to use reverse replication, which essentially just repoints the replication of the virtual machines back to your on-premises vSphere environment. From an automation perspective, there is full integration with vRealize Orchestrator through a plugin. This allows you to create multiple virtual machine recovery plans and automate the failover and power on scenarios. By leveraging vRealize Orchestrator, you can create groups of virtual machines you want to failover and power on in specific orders. This gives us greater flexibility when building a fully automated end-to-end -end disaster recovery solution. Now we are going to take a look at a demonstration. We are going to cover a few things as we go. Really quickly, we will see how we configure replication to the cloud and how we bring our workloads back from the cloud and have a general look around the service. Let's get started. So with this introductory video, we're going to take a look at how we use the vSphere replication plugin to manage our incoming and outgoing replications. So when we're doing this, this uses the vSphere replication and does asynchronous replication from our on-premises vSphere environment out to vCloud Air. So we click on the vSphere replication plugin in the vSphere web client. So we go into the monitor area of the vSphere replication appliance. And we have two key areas. We have outgoing replications and incoming replications. The outgoing replications is where we look at the virtual machines that are being replicated to vCloud Air from our on-premises vSphere environment. And then we have the incoming replications, which shows us the virtual machines that we're replicating from vCloud Air to our on-premises environment. We see that we have two virtual machines here and we can see that their status is okay, which means they're replicating successfully from the cloud. So we go back to outgoing replications and we can see with this virtual machine DR test 02 that we have a number of status options that we can look at to see what's happening with this virtual machine. So we can see here with this virtual machine that the status is okay. So this means that we replicated and we had last replicated at 6.47 a.m. We can see how long the replication took. So we can see the sync duration is 39 seconds. And we can also see that the sync size is 7.34 megabytes. So this actually means that the last time that we did a replication on our 15 minute recovery point objective, 
was 7.34 megabytes in size and it took us 39 seconds to do the replication. So by looking at this, we can see that we're easily able to meet our recovery point objective because the replication is taking less time than what we have for our RPO settings. If we had a large amount of data that was changing regularly, then our RPO would show a different status and we would see that the replication sync isn't able to complete within that 15 minutes. So it's important to note these settings and these configuration options so that we know that we can meet our RPO settings. So the other thing that we can look at within the status options for this virtual machine is our point in time recovery options. So we can see by clicking on point in time that we have this enabled and we've configured it to keep three instances per day for the last five days. So we can actually scroll up and down this window to see how many recovery options we have, what time they were taken and what size they are. So this allows us in the event of a failover to actually fail back to these particular points in time. So in the event of data corruption, then we can fail back to a previously replicated point, allowing us to reconfigure this virtual machine and recover our data successfully. So we can also see with this virtual machine that we currently have a status of initial full sync. Now this means that we're actually copying the full virtual machine from our on-premises vSphere environment out to vCloud Air. So we're doing a full copy. So when this is finished, we will have a status of OK, and it will show us what our RPO settings are and what our sync sizes are. But while we're doing the full copy, we are literally copying every block in this virtual machine out to vCloud Air. We're now going to go and look at VMs and templates and how we can actually configure the replication for each virtual machine that we have running in our vSphere environment. So we go to virtual machines and template, and we scroll to the virtual machine that we want to configure, which in this instance is DRTest04. We then simply just right click on this virtual machine, and then we select all vSphere act replication actions, and we simply select configure replication. And this will take us to the configuration wizard that allows us to configure. So we can see that we have two options. We have replicate to a cloud provider, which allows us to replicate out to vCloud Air. And we also have replicate to a vCenter server. The replicate to a vCenter server allows us to, if we're using SRM or if we want to replicate across two sites using vSphere, we simply select replicate to a vCenter server. However, for this, we're going to configure replicate to a cloud provider so we can configure the replication to vCloud Air. Now, the first thing we see is a list of the virtual data centers that we have configured. In this instance, we have VDC1, and this is configured in our Virginia data center in vCloud Air. We now select our storage policies, which for vCloud Air disaster recovery, we actually only get the ability to use the standard storage policy. And we can also configure replication seeds. So if we click the drop down list for storage policies, we will see that we only have one storage policy configured. And we'll talk about replication seeds in a later demonstration. So now we have the ability to configure guest OS quiescing. So if we have a database server or anything that we want to make sure that we quiesce the, the operating system, we simply enable that option by clicking the checkbox. We now come to our recovery point objective settings. So we can set a recovery point objective from 15 minutes to 24 hours. And this is where we sp specify how often we actually perform a replication. So if you think about how, how much data changes we have within a virtual machine, this is how we define how much data we want copying. So if we have a lot of data changes that regularly occur within a virtual machine, then we want to lower our RPOs to 15 minutes, for example. So this means that we replicate a copy of this virtual machine, the changes made to this virtual machine every 15 minutes. Whereas if we set it to 24 hours, that allows us to have a larger data change rate and to replicate less frequently. 
So this is where we configure the point in time instances. So we can actually specify how many previous replication points we actually keep in vCloud Air in the event of a failover. So we can see here that you can increase the numbers by clicking on the arrows, and we can have a maximum of 24 in total. So if we go over this total, then we will actually see that we have a, an error at the bottom that tells us we can't exceed those 24 points. So it's very intuitive when you're configuring these. So we're going to keep one and keep them for a maximum of 24 days, which means we have a replication point that we can fail back to for the past 24 days. Now we're ready to complete, so we check our, our status configuration options and we click Finish. And we can see the task at the bottom is now configuring a virtual machine for replication. And if we go home and then we go to the vSphere replication plugin, we can actually check the status of the virtual machine that we've just configured in the vSphere replication plugin. And by clicking the refresh button, we can update the status of these virtual machines, and we can see that virtual machine DRTest04 has a status of configuring. So this is currently configuring the replication to go from our on-premises VT environment to vCloud Air. And we can see now that with the refresh, we're now performing initial full sync. So much in the same way that we had with the previous virtual machine we looked at, we are now copying that full virtual machine from our on-premises environment out to vCloud Air. So we'll go to vCloud Air and we'll actually look at the status of what's going on with the virtual machines in the public cloud. Now, when you log into vCloud Air, you're presented with a tile-based solution. So this gives us the ability to select different services that are running in vCloud Air. We have My Subscriptions, where we can actually access our subscription-based clouds. We have Virtual Private Cloud On Demand. And we also have Disaster Recovery to the Cloud, which is the one that we're going to select for this demonstration. And this takes us into our Disaster Recovery Virtual Private Cloud. So when we log into our cloud, we get all our virtual machines that are existing in vCloud Air listed with a similar view as what you see in your vSphere web client. We see that the virtual machines have recovery status showing us. And we can see that replication in progress, and we also have reverse replication in progress, which means we're replicating from the cloud back to on-premises. If we click the replication status tab, this gives us more granular information that we need to look at what's going on with these virtual machines. So we can see our DRTest04 virtual machine in the same way that we saw in the vSphere web client, is currently performing an initial full sync. And we have an RPO configured of 15 minutes. So we can also see the status of the virtual machines that have completed their replication and are just replicating on, on the RPO settings that we've configured. So we can see that this virtual machine, DRTest02, has a replication status showing success. And we can see here that it last completed its replication at 7.45, how long the duration of the replication was, and the size of that replication, which is 4.9 meg. So this gives us granular status options to look at how we actually are managing our RPO settings for this virtual machine. Now, if we go back to Virtual Machines tab, we actually have some options that we can perform in vCloud Air for our virtual machines that we're replicating. We actually have the ability to perform test failovers, and we can actually recover these virtual machines in the event of a data center failure. So now we're going to look at how we configure our virtual machine replication to bring our virtual machines from vCloud Air back to our on-premises vSphere environment. So how do we actually fail back these virtual machines to our vSphere environment? So you can see here that we have a virtual machine that's running in vCloud Air called DRTest06. And we're actually going to replicate this virtual machine from vCloud Air to our vSphere environment. And we do this by going to the vSphere web client and we configure our incoming replications. 
So we click on incoming replications and we're given a number of options we can configure here. We have the ability to actually pause our replication and fail over our virtual machines, but we want to actually configure an incoming replication from vCloud Air. So we click on the configure replication button and then this presents us with the configure the replication from cloud provider wizard. So we select our virtual data center where our virtual machines are running. And what we actually see here is a list of all the virtual machines that are out in vCloud Air. So we select the DR test 06 virtual machine, which is the one that we want to replicate from the cloud back to our on-prem environment. And we click Next. We're now presented with the ability to select a vSphere replication server. And this is if we've got multiple vSphere replication servers running in our environment. But for the interest of this demonstration, we're just going to stick with the auto-assigned replication server. We now have the ability to select our default data stores. So if we have a number of storage policies configured in vSphere, we can actually pick these storage policies to assign to our virtual machine for when we begin the replication. But for the interest of this demonstration, we'll just leave it as the default. We can configure guest OS quiescing, and then in the same way that we did with the previous workflows, we can configure our RPOs and point in time instances. So we can still configure our 15 minutes to 24 hour RPOs, and we still have a maximum of 24 point in time instances that we can configure for this virtual machine. We then confirm our settings, make sure they're all correct, and we click Finish. Now, if we refresh this, we can see that this virtual machine, DR Test 06, now has a status of not active. And we're now beginning an initial full sync. So we know that we're copying this virtual machine from vCloud Air. We can also see by going to vCloud Air, that we've now been given a notification in the user interface there that says that we've actually configured reverse replication and it's all completed successfully. We can see that the status for this DR test 06 is a reverse replication in progress. And we can see the status here under replication status is that it's configuring. So go, we'll go back to the web client and we'll just monitor the status from there. That concludes this introduction of the disaster recovery offering provided by VMware vCloud Air. I really hope this has given you a good introduction into the capabilities of this service, and I want to thank you for watching. For more information about VMware vCloud Air disaster recovery, please visit vcloud.vmware.com tutorials.